Hello, my name's Matt Dent and this is Mantis Hacks and this is part three of my Dio Droid build. I've been making pretty good progress with this build so far and I've got the drive system working quite nicely but it still needs improvement. The other problem is I've blown up another one of these uh, Arduino Maker motor driver boards um, but I think I know what the problem is now and I'm pretty sure it's a design fault so I'm going to start by talking about that. I had the um, my Dio switched on on the bench. It was in standby motor, none of the motors were powered up so the board was really drawing no current at all. Uh, but then suddenly it burst into flames and it's just about here behind these two connectors and that is where there are two MOSFET uh, P-channel devices that act as a reverse polarity uh, uh, protection and also the power switch. Well the issue is that these two devices are running out of spec uh, and it's not how much power they can um, provide to the board, it's actually the voltage that's driving the gate on them and it says a maximum of plus and minus 8 volts and currently I'm running at 12 volts and they've, the way they've designed the board is that that 12 volts will run straight into the gate. I was a member of the uh, DO Builders Forum that uh, looked up the schematic and actually found that uh, 8 volt uh, limit so thanks for that, I should name check you. The chips had pretty much blown themselves off the board so what I did is I just removed them with a soldering iron and I replaced them with a shorting link basically it means that the power switch on the board doesn't work anymore but the power just goes straight through and it's not going to burst into flames. So I've got the closed loop feedback motors in and that made a huge difference and I've actually got some really lovely drivable motion out of uh, Dio but there's one small problem is that, and that is that um, these motors have a certain amount of breakout force in the motor. In open loop mode the minimum RPM is about 60 and in closed loop mode I can get them down to about 30 RPM. I think I need to be down at about 10 RPM. Now of course you could put a bigger gearbox on, uh, make them slower, but then I'm going to lose my top end speed. But I have a couple of solutions for that, and one is that I'm going to try a medium power motor on here. This is the high power version, and I'm hoping the medium power will have a, a lower breakout force and less cogging in the motor itself. An alternative to that is to swap out for much more expensive motors like a Maxon or something like that, but I'm trying to avoid that at the moment. And I can show you why this is important and it's basically due to when Dio is stationary and he's trying to balance, you need very slight adjustments on the wheel, so you need tiny movements. Because they kick in at 30 RPM, it'll suddenly get a jolt and, it'll, and it's fine, it will stabilise but it will jolt along. And until you get past 30 RPM, you don't get nice smooth motion. Dio is powered up, he's got his head in place uh, so I can get the weight right. And uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, tilt him forwards a bit and you'll see the motor will try to catch up and bring him back to centre. But because of that minimum RPM, it kicks in and you get that little jolt, like that. Now it's fine once you get to a certain speed, and you can continue in motion. So that's why I want to try and get that minimum RPM down as low as possible, so you can get rid of the jolt as he kicks in. Uh, another thing I need to address mechanically is um, the way that this uh, head pitch is held onto the servo down on the body. If you remember the um, servo is inside of here through this axle and it's uh, joined to the neck, uh, sorry, the head pitch motion via a double clamp. Now I think the problem is, is that because the Iger shaft is only 8mm, the clamp isn't really biting down on enough and, and creating enough friction to stop this from moving. So right now you can back drive it over the clamp. As you move the head around, after a couple of goes, the clamp will lose position. So I'm either going to have to pin that, or find a way of producing more friction. Maybe it needs a, a double um, nut and bolt on the clamp or something like that. I'll take a look at that anyway. I managed to get a much nicer finish on this print, um, and that was just down to the print settings. In fact, it's, it's so good now, there's only a little bit of cleanup needed along this piece here, which is where the internal structure meets the external part. On this one, I was getting some really bad scarring, uh, and that was wherever there was a join where the, the print head was start and stop. There's a couple of ways to get rid of that. One is to have random start points. I hadn't noticed when it was printing, it was actually printing 
two layers so it was doing an inside and an outside print for every layer whereas actually this is all designed to be printed with a single extrusion layer i felt like i needed to uh, stiffen this assembly up a bit because when it was sat on the hub it felt to me like the whole thing wanted to sort of flex a little bit but i also had to thin the spokes out i had to take a millimeter off of this because they were just catching on the back of the encoders of the new motors i printed this in petg I also doubled the amount of spokes to put the strength back in. I printed the spokes with four external layers or perimeters. Um, what that has done is printed the spokes nearly solid and I think that's kind of stiffened this whole assembly up now. While I'm on the subject of printing, I'm just going to talk about a couple of materials I'm using quite a lot, which is Polylite PLA and Polymax PLA by Polymaker. This is Polylite PLA. It's very easy to print. And you know, it's like most PLAs, it's fairly brittle. This is Polymax PLA, which is identical to print, but it's much, much tougher. I've just implemented one change quickly, which was that shaft clamp. Um, I've added two bolts at this end to try and tighten it up. And I've also printed this in PETG, so a slightly tougher material. Uh, this end doesn't really need it because the clamp here is only to stop the shaft from sliding out this way. It's not actually transferring torque, rotational torque, because that's done by the bolt down here. So I'll put that in and see if that's helped at all. So that's basically holding place now. It's not shifting as it's moved. I'll kind have of a little bit of a wobbly head. I'll see what it's like when it's going along, but I'd like to get rid of that. I've got one of my um, tricks going on here, which is uh, some uh, free animation, as I like to call it. So as Dio turns, the head pre-leads the turn, and that's based on the IMU rather than the controls. So it means that if you get someone pushing him, he kind of interacts as well, which is quite nice. I've got that speaker in the front cone here, and there's a speaker on the back of the head on the electronics uh, coming out through this grill. Michael Badley's given me a few of his sound files, and I've just rigged them up on this switch here as random. I also have head tracking working on this. Whichever way the nose is pointing, that's now up and down. So if I leave him facing forwards and push down on the stick, the nose goes up and down. If I turn him to the side and push down on the stick, the nose goes up and down. So that's circular interpolation. Regardless of where the head is pointing, up and down is always up and down. It mixes them through those two servos, the head pitch and the head roll servo. Well now seems like a good time to um, take a quick look at what I've done with the head as far as the little antennas concerned and the electronics. The three little servos on here, direct drive onto the antennas and the antennas will mount into the back of these parts. Electronics and what have you have just been mounted into plates and then that's been glued onto the back of the head. And so what I've got in the middle here is the Lynx Motion 2RC module. Um, I think I've mentioned before this is a pre-production version. Uh, so there will be changes made to this coming from the body up to the head all i need is power and a data line and uh, rather than running all these signals that i require here i just power on data and then in the head there will be a small arduino like this 2rc um, which will distribute uh, signals to wherever they need to go the power coming out of there and then actually a software serial port set up on one of the pins because there's a different board rate and a, and a different protocol for the Dynamixels, so that handles that. It also has another software serial port set up here, which is going to my audio effects board, the Adafruit board, um, and this is the board that has the amplifier built in. It's a 16 megabyte board. Again, um, it's just data that's coming up to, into this that's uh, then sending on the trigger information. Oh, that's the other speaker connector that goes forward to the uh, nose cone. The last job it has to do is also run the servos um, and so there are three servo outputs here so they would plug in like this and the other two would plug into the other two channels it has a little 5 volt regulator and although these servos are very small the regulator is only rated at about 1.2 amps um, so it won't be big enough to run these so I'm going to have to add another 5 volt regulator uh, to run the servos from maybe I'll just show you how I uh, get the cable through the body and up to the head I'm just using a standard servo cable, extension lead, which I've chopped in two. Uh, this one was about a metre long, just to give me plenty of length. So I'll be using power and then the data signal for the servo stream. And the idea is that I'm going to use the extension lead 
but it's all be joined inside of this tube. So I'll put the other end in and then push it all back inside the tube. Feed it through here, through the center of the hub, uh, spin this round and pull it out the hub and back up into the board and connect it up. There is the cable going through and then it disappears down the axle there. And I'll just um, put a connector on to join it into the power distribution hub here. Now I've just fed the other end of the servo cable um, through the neck joiner piece here and then down through the slot inside of the head and it pops out just behind the clamp there and comes up through the head. That should join into there. Push this down and hopefully, yeah. There you go. We just need to put that fixing bolt back in the back of the neck there. And that seems pretty good. So it's quite a nice easy way of detaching the head by having that uh, join inside the neck there. So once the uh, head is on to the um, roll and yaw assembly, I've got three cables here. This is the cable coming up from the body, which I've added the uh, four pin Molex connector to. Of course, I've got two power and one signal. There's the Dynamixel cable and the speaker cable. A rear head section would basically, uh, that plugs in to the uh, 2RC connector there. And then that goes to the Dynamixel and then that goes to the speaker. Um, right now this is kind of held in place with just a couple of screws that uh, sit underneath of here. But I think maybe a little magnet up the top as well just to clip it into place. This back section is getting a little heavy and it does it doesn't help with the rocking and wobbling about because it's sort of sat over here. So I might have to end up moving some of this electronics back inside the head again as I originally planned. Um, but right now it's good enough for testing. This neck pitch assembly, um, something to note with this when you're feeding the wires through. I actually did it whilst it was fully assembled uh, from this end down. And then I uh, soldered on a Molex connector ready for the LSS uh, servo bus system. But the nice thing about that is that you can pop the pins out of the connector, which means you can feed the wire back down through all of this and take this fully apart if you need to. And what I am looking at doing on this side, I might increase the bearings from 25 mil to uh, 30, 30 mil bearings here, which means that they would go over this cog. So then I don't have to take this apart every time just to take this sub assembly out and I don't have to pop the pins out. So I thought I'd bring Dio down to the carpet for some tests and uh, see how well it behaves on here. It feels pretty good. Um, the thing that's letting it down really is one of those, that minimum RPM on those motors. So you get that rocking when it's trying to stabilize. And the other thing is that wobble on the head that really needs some um, sorting out because it's way too wobbly at the moment. It is a little trickier on carpet. It just wants to dig in as you turn on carpet. The new motors from Palolu turned up, so I've swapped out the high power versions with a medium power version of the motor. The gearboxes come straight off and will exchange uh, straight onto the new motor. So far it feels really good, I mean it's such a big improvement. The motors I can get running down to below 10 RPM, uh, previously it was about 30 RPM, and there's just none of that cogging as they kick in, it's just beautifully smooth. The only downside is we've lost a bit of top end speed, um, so we're down to about uh, 370 RPM top end now. So we've lost about 20% in our uh, top end speed. And these are lower power, so hopefully they'll have enough torque. They feel like they will. Of course, if we did want to go faster, I could drop the gearbox down and we could go twice as fast again, but uh, it just already feels so much smoother. Beautiful. Now I've also managed to find some green uh, flexible filament. This is uh, Cheetah filament by Ninja Tech and it was supplied to me by 3D Filiprint. Prints pretty easily, um, it's quite a nice stuff. The only thing is it does shrink back a bit, I think, because it was tighter getting these over the black uh, plastic kind of drive gear. They wouldn't quite go over them, so I had to kind of pop it on. Um, so I fear that it might have shrunk down a bit, so it might be affected by um, the carpet driving, I don't know. As it's driving so nicely at the moment on the bench, I'm going to get it back together and uh, try it out again. Well, 
I just went and made a change to the software two stories up in my office and downloaded the code to Dio sat here on the lounge floor. Impressive. Well, I tried it on the carpet, but there wasn't enough grip, so I suspect either I've printed the uh, new green drive uh, edges uh, with the wrong file, so they're too small, or there is a bit of shrinkage on that cheetah. I'll have to try that again, and make sure I'm using the right file. Um, but anyway, here it is on the hard surface floor. The tuning is a little bit too hot at the moment. I can get rid of some of that. There's a little bit too much overcompensation. But otherwise, it definitely dries much nicer with these medium power motors in. Just coming out of those tight turns, it tends to get into a little bit of oscillation there. So I think I could fix that. Although these motors uh, are nice and smooth now, I kind of feel like they might be slightly underpowered because on carpet, he's definitely struggling more than he was before. Um, on a hard surface, it's working really nicely. But I think they're just a little bit under torque now. I did replace that uh, DC-DC converter underneath the electronic stack. Uh, and what I did is I put a really good quality one in there. It was about 50 pounds, not cheap. So I could maybe take it up to 13 volts or more and give it 10% more power maybe. I think the rims now are about the right size, but they could be a little bit bigger. Maybe I could do something with that just to make sure it's not that it's sticking on the carpet. The other thing of course that could be done is that the cog on the output shaft of the motor could be made smaller. Of course, the top speed would go down a bit. So I'm not too keen on doing that. The other alternative is completely different motors, um, which I'm not too keen to do because this is a really nice fit right now. So um, I don't know yet. I'll have a think about that. So I've actually gone back to the three to one gearing on the neck pitch servo, this one here. Um, I think there's enough speed left in it. It was slightly struggling with the weight of this head because I have obviously gone with a heavier head on this design. I could go to the high torque version of the of the same server, the HT1. I'm using ST1s in here at the moment. So I could go back to one to one gearing and a high torque motor and see if it behaves differently. Each time I change one of these things, of course, all the tuning parameters change and I have to go back and retune it, which is kind of fun. Maybe I'm being a little bit hard on myself because it's running really nicely right now, uh, bar a little bit of tuning and tweaking. What I do need to sort out is the weight of this head. Well, not necessarily the weight, I think more like the weight distribution. I can move some of the electronics forwards into the middle of the head where I originally planned to have them. I can get rid of a lot of this play on the pivot on the servo, it's moving. I can reprint the head so it's slightly stiffer build, but there's a lot that can be done with that to improve it. So I'll work on that for the next video. I'm hoping to have a special guest in my next video who's gonna come along and help me uh, start preparing the head for painting. So make sure you check back in to find out who that is. Don't forget there's also the DO Builders Forum now on Facebook and there's lots of more information in the description section below, including links to the original Michael Bradley's designs. Until then, bye. Yeah. All of that in the shop. There goes,